already of radioactive contamination. Could you mention a word or two about those? Oh, absolutely. The first, the first summer, um, in the summer of 2011, um, I had been a, a gardener, an avid gardener, and, and grown my own produce for 17 years. And I was always interested in mutations because that was my, um, my area of expertise was actually in, uh, in genetics and retinal pathology and clinical research. But I never saw anything in nature, and, and pretty soon I started seeing it happening in things that grew very fast, things that uptake a lot of water, uh, like dandelions and weeds and young trees and, and things of that nature. And then when I went back to the Chernobyl research and I learned about, you know, the, the findings in tree leaves and in, um, in flowers and, in, and then later in animals, um, I started a page on Facebook called Mutation Watch and I put out a call for images to see what people were noticing in their part of the country. And, um, you know, I, I get emails every day saying, I've been, you know, growing corn for 30 years and I've never seen anything like this. Or I've had these trees on my property my whole life and they've never developed triple and quadruple seedlings. And just all of these changes that are occurring um, are, are the exact same thing that happened after Chernobyl and the same thing that happened after Three Mile Island. And I made the acquaintance of a woman named Mary Osborne, who's known as the mutation lady of Three Mile Island. And when anyone in that area notices something funny growing in their yard, they call her and she comes over and takes a picture of it. And she's collected thousands of images over the years. And when you put our images next to each other, it's all the same thing. So, you know, in order for this correlation to be incontrovertible, we need to test these plants but there's no way to test them because the universities are not going to let you just walk in and use their very expensive equipment. And even to test just one small section of a plant would take hours to do. So um, we're kind of stuck with just collecting images for right now, making those images available to researchers who want to use them in, um, in any of the research that they're doing and just to keep asking the public for data and sourcing as much of that as we can through social media and in turn um, you know getting the word out with social media as much as possible too since all of these agencies and organizations that have been set up to protect us and warn us about um, fallout or other contaminants are, are not really doing their job at least from the evidence that we're seeing well, it is stunning, and, and, and the fact that these uh, effects are being experienced clear across the country, I mean, from from San Francisco, Oakland Bay to Michigan, is really stunning all by itself. L Lorraine, I know this new study includes a map showing where the contamination is the greatest in the West, that the area of greatest concentration appeared to be Chicago, and uh, I wonder what that means. Have you got an interpretation about why Chicago or that area should be, you know, he heavy among the many areas in the country that are being so strongly affected? Okay, you're you're referring to the uh, the contamination map from the article twenty eight signs that the West Coast is being fried. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, that map is a combined. Uh, it's a map of combined radiation contamination from different sources. So part of it is um, the, uh, the radiation that has been released every day from nuclear power plants across the U.S. Um, so that's why there are more symbols on the um, eastern half of the U.S. Those, many of those are nuclear power plants, which have been in operation since the 60s and 70s. But also, there is contamination from um, the um, military sources, depleted uranium, and so forth on, on military bases and firing ranges and bombing ranges in the U.S., um, which... Uh, are it's that stuff is all over the U.S. Every base is contaminated with it. I think you could say, and uh, of course, then the rainout and fallout. It's the rainout of 
uh, the military munition, radiological and, and nuclear uh, mini nukes that they've been using in Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Syria and other, not Syria, um, Lebanon and other places. And that comes across the ocean, believe it or not, all the way across uh, the Eurasian continent, over the Pacific, and then it's rained out across the United States and Canada. So that's part of the cause of elevated radiation in the U.S. And um, then, of course, Fukushima is on top of that. And I, I think that... Um, a lot of the radiation, particularly in the western states and the the western slope of the Rocky Mountains, a lot of that is Fukushima. And the very large increase in, um, alarming increase in death rates in the U.S., uh, the highest increase is on the west slope of the Rocky Mountains where rain and snow uh, rains out the... the um, the radiation transported in air masses from west to east. Christina, I, 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 do you have that map in front of you as we speak? Because uh, I want to get your take, too, on what, you, what the distribution shows and wh whether anything strikes you as especially interesting about this. I, I don't have that map. I saw that map. I don't have it right in front of me, but I, I do know from watching the atmospheric transport, and I was doing a fallout forecast for um, the, the first year ac after the accident, um, trying to predict where this rainout would occur and then seeing how it corresponded to um, these various Geiger networks that had been set up. And we were able to predict within about 90 to 95 percent of the time where the highest levels would occur. And something that I see that happened um, on a daily basis was higher levels around the Great Lakes region and part of that is because of all the humidity from the Great Lakes um, binds with these particles and they occur with uh, with rain out and so forth and there's in, in Michigan we have a lot of um, variance in the in the weather and in precipitation levels as it is um, being on the east coast of Lake Huron I know that they get about four times the amount of precipitation on the west coast of Ontario, which is across the lake. So we have this lake effect that occurs, and we also see that with snowfall totals in um, like the Grand Rapids region, which is on the western side of the state, that anywhere around these lakes is going to have a, a, a greater uh, potential for fallout because of the amount of humidity and increased precipitation. This is most of the time entirely dependent on where the rain falls and where the snow occurs. Very and good. Then the, um, and then the, uh, the Great Lakes watershed is a vast and enormous region with um, rain out and snow out of all this radiation um, flowing into the Great Lakes and increasing the levels there and, of course, the water evaporates, it washes up on the shorelines, uh, the radioactive particles are lofted into the air, and we know that the highest cancer rates in studies from England and in the U.S. are along shorelines of lakes, coastlines of uh, geographic areas, and riverbanks. <laughs>